Hey, what's up, guys? <clears throat> My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins. Welcome to uh, DrBoyceTV.com, the home for intelligent black people. Um, I want to give you an update on GameStop, uh, just for those who've been asking about this a lot. Uh, hit the thumbs up button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, give me a yes in the chat if you can hear me okay. I'm going to give you an update as far as what's going on with GameStop, uh, GameStop, GameStop <laughs> stock, <clears throat> and also tell you what I think is likely going to happen. So uh, as I look at the stock today, it looks like it hasn't moved too much today. Um, <clears throat> well, sorry, when I say hasn't moved too much, it's actually gone up uh, about 134% in the last 24 hours. So when I say hasn't moved up too much today, um, it's 313 now, and it was about 300 or 310 or so uh, this morning. So GameStop is still moving. It hasn't slowed down. It's, it's kind of crazy. Um, and, you know, if you don't know the backstory, basically some Redditors uh, in a group called Wall Street Bets decided to uh, boost the stock. And uh, they did this in response to um, a, a short seller that they got pissed off at. And uh, he ended up closing his position. There's a long article about him in the Wall Street Journal. I don't have his name in front of me, but it was it was uh, pretty bad. He was kind of sad and, you know, kind of like, oh, what was me? They did this terrible thing to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody feels sorry for a billionaire or a multimillionaire or whatever. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, so so here's what um, I, I've been thinking about this today and people have been asking me all day. Feel free to put your question in the chat. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Um, I think that the uh, the regulators are going to um, respond to this. I saw a report that the Biden administration, uh, that the Securities and Exchange Commission have simply stated uh, in kind of a cryptic way that they are watching the volatility. They didn't mention GameStop. They just said, we're watching the volatility closely and uh, they probably are going to respond at some point. They're going to change something. Uh, and I was thinking about it. I said, what would they do if they wanted to shift the volatility? Well, I think that what they're probably gonna do is make it harder for day traders to day trade. I think that uh, they're gonna probably put some restrictions on the amount uh, by which a stock can move in a given day. They already have some of this, right? These are called circuit breakers. But I think they're going to really, 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 um, <clears throat> really, really uh, kind of minimize the amount of movement you can have. Because because when you have crazy volatility in a market, it just it's not good for the market. Now, mind you, hedge fund managers have been doing a lot of stock market stock movement you know and manipulation for a while uh, they go on tv and they talk about their favorite stock and the stock moves because of that but i don't think anybody's ever been able to do something this crazy um and, you know especially people that have no research backing what they're doing they just all decide the stock's going to be worth 300 dollars. so if you made money from this then congratulations i mean i'm happy for you i really am but i don't think i can't see this really happening for a long time it reminds me of the 1980s when you had a big market for corporate takeovers uh back in the 80s you know anybody who wanted to just take over a company could do it they could just go buy up all the shares and next thing you know you got new management in in you know in the organization well they changed the law they made they changed the law to make it harder to do uh corporate takeovers and, and gave companies methods to defend themselves and that pretty much ended that whole takeover frenzy. So I almost feel like this was a little bit of a corporate takeover. But the difference here is I don't see where GameStop loses. I mean, after all, GameStop, you know, AM AMC, I know, was happy when their stock price got punched up because they were able to go and take these worthless, crappy shares of stock <laughs> and sell them for, you know, 10 times what they were worth before. Uh, so that's, that's kind of a big deal. Um, now, if you want to know what people are saying about GameStop as far as professionals, and I've been reading articles about it all day, uh, here's an article from the Wall Street Journal. It says, GameStop mania reveals power shift on Wall Street, and the pros are reeling. Internet-fueled amateurs on platforms like Reddit and Discord are piling into stocks, bragging about gains, and banding together to intensify moves. The power dynamics are shifting on Wall Street. Individual investors are winning big, at least for now, and relishing it. An eye-popping rally in shares of companies that were once left for dead, including GameStop and AMC and BlackBerry, has upended the natural order between hedge fund managers and those trying their hand at trading from their sofas. While the individuals are rejoicing in the newfound riches, the pros are reeling from their losses. 
Long held strategies such as elevating company fundamentals, or sorry, evaluating company fundamentals, have gone out of the window in favor of momentum. Uh, now, momentum is interesting. You know, I wrote my dissertation on momentum. Actually, literally, I literally the word momentum is in the title of my dissertation. I don't, I don't remember the exact title though. It's, it's I haven't looked at it for a long time. But, um, but anyway, uh, war has broken out between professionals losing billions and the individual investors jeering at them on social media. Meanwhile, the frenzy of activity is stirring regulatory and legal concerns, as well as the attention of the Biden administration. The White House press secretary said on Wednesday that his economic team, including Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, is monitoring the situation. Now, let's keep it clear. Let's, I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. Um, this, the new SEC chairman and Sec Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen do not come off to me as people that are going to be happy about any of this. Uh, these are two people that I think are going to step in and... Uh, and create they're, they're all about stability and this is kind of unstable i mean it's fine it is what it is i mean somebody asked am i have i stayed away from the stock yeah i got out i i was i i, t I toggle with, with game stock and i made some money i also try toggle with um amc i made some money off that but i don't want to dig in too much because i'm trying to protect my capital that's my family's money i'm not going to be out here gambling and rolling the dice with my family's money but there is a bunch of money out there that's being made. And uh, if you're making the money, I'm happy for you. Just be extremely careful. Uh, Joseph Sutton, what are your thoughts on convertible bonds? Um, I think they're fine. I don't think there's anything special about them. I, I don't invest in them very much. Uh, let's see, Calvin says, this was great, that this is how hedge funds do people all the time, pump a stock up, then make calls and, and on, on the stock, go get your journalists to lie. Yeah. I don't know if it's quite the same, but I get your point. I mean, the, the billionaires, I mean, you've got hedge fund managers. If you look at the highest paid hedge fund managers in America, these guys are making over a billion dollars a year. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Let me see. Um, highest. Please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't done it yet. Please hit the thumbs up button. Highest page paid hedge fund managers for 2020. Let me see. The highest paid hedge fund managers um, last year, I guess. According to Bloomberg, sorry, this is 2018, but same same thing. Um, James Simmons made 1.6 billion. Number two was Ray Dalio, who made 1.26 billion. King Griffin made 870 million, uh, 770 million for John Overdeck, etc. So these guys are making you know a billion dollars plus per year. Um, so so these hedge fund managers are getting over like fat rats. America is a con country that has way too much inequality, and it's all a big mess. How do I think AMC will do tomorrow? Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not in. I'm not in the business of predicting. You, you really theoretically aren't supposed to be able to predict what an individual stock does unless you are um, manipulating that stock, right? Uh, now let me tell you about GameStop. GameStop in the last hour or so, the last couple hours. Well, actually, not even the last hour or so. Remember, I told you it was at three thirteen. Well, now it's at two sixty four. So literally, this stock has dropped over fifty dollars a share in the last ten minutes. So that's not that's not a market I want to invest in. I don't want to put my grandkids money, you know, my great grandkids, great, great grandkids money in a market that's that crazy. Now, let me check AMC. I'm going to check that. Let me know. Give me a yes in the chat if you can hear me. OK, because I'm switching screens. AMC is still hanging in there. It's still hovering around fourteen dollars a share. Um, you know, it's, it was down as low as I guess maybe a, a week ago. It was down as low as maybe four or five or six. So uh, it's gone up four hundred and forty eight percent this month. So uh, if you got if you if you made your big money, um, I would just encourage I, I don't encourage greed. Greed is when you hang on for dear life and you just hope that you can make even more money than you made already. Uh, being smart means protecting your gains, you know, taking some off the table. Maybe you buy a put option. Maybe you, you know, sell a little bit. I, I don't know. It's up to you to decide how to do that. Uh, what about Workhorse? Asked Walt. I like Workhorse. I have a big investment in Workhorse. Um, I, I like the company. I like to I like selling their options. Uh, it's a great speculators like to bet on workhorse so i like to sell options to the speculators whenever options are being bought somebody's selling those options i don't like to buy them but i like to sell them nancy pelosi bought calls on disney and apple for 2022 that's interesting hmm. yeah disney just had or apple apple just had a massive massive um earnings report i think they made over a hundred billion dollars in, in one quarter i don't think i don't think i've ever heard of a company making a hundred billion dollars in revenue in one quarter so apple's got the game on lock um, I wonder if regulators are ever going to step up and deal with Apple. Um, I don't, let's see, I don't care. All I know is I turned $428 into 108000 in less than 24 hours. Says Wayne the Wolf. Good for you, man. Good for you. Everybody clap for Wayne. Clap for Wayne. The homie Wayne is paid. Paid Wayne. Wayne. 
you know, my cash app is Dr. Boyce, right? You know, you know, Wayne, yeah, we, I, I, I've been cool with you, Wayne, for a long time. And I think it's time that, you know, that you go ahead and hook a, hook a brother up. I'm messing with you, man. I, I made my money too, Wayne. Congratulations to Wayne the Wolf. He turned up $428 into 108000 That is awesome, man. Well, go get your money, partner. Don't don't leave it out there. <laughs> don't leave it out there. <laughs> Protect your investment, my brother. Um, let's see. Semper Lyle says AMC will do fine. Actually, will actually be up again because of the squeeze. Or so we hope. You never know when they're gonna stop. Um, when the when the party will be over. Like this is a big game of musical chairs. That's where you gotta be careful. Wayne says I'm very grateful. Good, good. There you go. Stay humble with your riches, man. Uh, Wayne's going to be a billionaire up in here. Uh, Lamar's Bazaar. Why do the news companies bring on hedge fund guys and they advise people to do the opposite of their investments? Um, hmm, uh, that that I don't know. I, I don't see that. But, you know, um, I, that I have not seen. But maybe it's possible. Simper says you have to remember that everybody uh, fees something and everybody wants something. So why are you buying that stock? In the other hand, you know that the value of that stock is either. I, I, I'm sorry, that, I can't read that question. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. F, somebody says FTD Ameritrade, okay, uh, and paid them taxes. Yes, now your next problem is the IRS. El Hodge, are you still coming out with stock options course? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm still working on it, actually. I just want to make sure it's exactly what I want it to be. So I've been taking my time with it to make sure I get it just right. But uh, I will do that. And uh, I actually did a stock options masterclass. If you want to take a look at that, there's a URL on the screen. So feel free to go take a look at that. But yeah, I am putting together a special stock options masterclass that, that goes to the next level in terms of showing you exactly what I do with my portfolio. Stop going on about this dumb stock. You should be embarrassed, says B. Marley. But yeah, B. Marley, you're sitting here listening to me. So you must love this. You know you love this. Just stop it. Uh, let's see. Wayne the Wolf says, I bought 20 of the January 29th, $9 call contracts for 2140 good for you good for you have you heard of the fire movement it's asked for rod yes i have uh, i think that's um what is it uh something something retire early i can't remember what the first two letters are but it's basically like like really rapid fire investing like investing like a large percentage of your income and i think they talk about the use of um insurance a whole life insurance and things like that and index funds to grow your wealth I personally think that there are faster ways to earn um, that much money. I would, I would, I would actually, you know, put a determined amount of energy into like starting a business, and then when your income gets to eighty thousand dollars a month, then you can retire whenever you want to. Um, that that's what I think. I think that anybody who wants to be rich should have uh, people in their family that are all trained on how to start businesses. So if you learn, like, memorize the steps to form an LLC, and then learn, you know, how to actually find a find a customer, sell a product how to supply that product to the customer or the service and make your money that way. I've seen that to me has been the fastest path I've seen to wealth is when people start a business, it's good. Next thing you know, you got more customers than you can handle. I might have a student who did that. She started, she, she took the black wealth bootcamp actually. And she started, um, she, she finally got the guts to put together her CMOS and make, she makes her CMOS at home or something. And next thing you know, like within less than a month, her income would quadruple because there were people who wanted to buy her CMOS. That's it. If you make something that people want to buy, then they'll pay you for it. They they don't care if if you, you know, I, if it's $10 or $50 or $20 or whatever, a lot of people give you $25 if you give them something that they, that they like. So just jump into it. Rolando, uh, I've been listening to you talk about investing, but I really want to, but the fear is keeping me from doing it. Uh, well, you know, Rolando, you don't have to jump into the crazy uh, the crazy stocks. I, I wouldn't jump into the crazy stuff. This stuff I'm talking to you guys about with GameStop is interesting because I've never seen it before. I, and I've studied a lot in the market. Like I've studied data going back a hundred years. Right. So, and I've never seen anything like this. So I feel like this is really fascinating to observe. Um, it's almost like talking about the Super Bowl or something. It's very exciting and it's not the end of this, right? It's like, it's like the financial version of when those people um, attacked the capital. Like when they did the run up on the capital, they ran up on the billionaires. And this kind of populism is not to be unexpected, given that there's so much inequality in this country. You have so much, you have so many people that are making way too much money and a lot of people who are not making enough. And that's not sustainable. So I actually love seeing this happen. And I really hope that the little guy is able to still go in and get his money. Uh, let's see here. I made my little $800, so I'm happy with it. Good for you. Good for you. 
discourse discord banned wall street bets really did they oh wow okay um al spooner do you find in symbolism in the GameStop maybe the stock that caused some of these hedge funds games they play to stop oh do i think that it caused them to stop yeah the hedge funds are scared just so you know the hedge fund um managers the big fat cats on wall street right now they're just freaking out because they've never been hit in the mouth like that before they've never had this happen so they don't know what to do they're just kind of like whoa just you know now we have to move a little more you know like little wayne said g's move in silence like they have to move in silence and they got to be really careful. They're not messing with the mob. They're, they're just not going to. There's an article in the Wall Street Journal about the guy who um, they originally got mad at. And he's like really sad. And he's probably depressed because he's going to go bankrupt. Like they literally like wiped this guy clean. Like the losses he took were sick. And so um, that's what it is. That's life. Things have changed. Uh, let's see. Never depend on a single source of income. Uh, okay. All right. So he's selling some sort of Bitcoin scam or something and you're going to get blocked. Can you make a video on stocks that you bought and sold on Robinhood? Uh, well, yeah, I've, I've done that. I've talked about that. I actually talk about stock recommendations like once a week. And then also, um, I talk to my students all the time about what I'm buying. So you can actually go to the blackstockmarketprogram.com if you want to see all the content. Uh, feel free. Um, the first month is free. So feel free to go take a look at the blackstockmarketprogram.com. There's the URL. Uh, let's see here. Walt, if they change the game on stocks, what will stop them from messing with crypto? Nothing. And they will mess with crypto. So you just have to kind of move and, and adjust. Um, and, and just kind of know that they might still leave it. You know, it's not like they're going to kill a certain market it's more like they're just going to kind of change the rules like it won't be as easy to get ahead as it was before it's like facebook like five six years ago it's very easy to make money on facebook because facebook was operating very differently in 2015 than it is now you know and over time facebook's going to get more and more strict that you know they're going to find the places where people are getting ahead and making money and having too much power and they're going to kind of shut some of that down so that's why you got always ready to adjust very very important uh, Wall Street Bets just made their account private and invitation only. <laughs> Good for them. Good for them. Um, let's see here. Dr. Boyce, what do you think about 22 and SNDL? I, I don't know about those two. I'm sorry. Not, if those are two individual stocks. I, I don't I don't follow. There's thousands of stocks. So I wish I could tell you. I don't, I don't know. Uh, Will Deal, these billionaires don't want me to become the next thousand here. <laughs> Well, I do, Will. I want you to become a, a trillionaire. Uh, let's see. Bobby's World Analyst from Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan can quickly can publicly downgrade a stock, causing it to free fall and little and investors lose big just because the firm has sold out their positions. Yeah, that's a good point. You're not lying about that. Excellent point. Brenda Johnson. I have gotten the stocks yet. and I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. Can you explain it in layman's terms? What just happened? Thank you, Dr. Boyce. Sure, Brenda. Uh, basically, uh, there, there's a company, there's GameStop, GameStop stock, GameStop stock, stock. See, I keep having a hard time saying it. And they, um, the company's not doing so well, not making a lot of money. And uh, there were people that were going to do what they call a short sell. These big wealthy guys on Wall Street were basically going to do a short sell where they sell the stock first and then they buy it back later. They try to buy it back cheaper because they believe the price is going to drop. So if you sell it at, you know, 25 and you buy it back at 15, then you can make $10 a share. Well, the people on this Reddit forum online got pissed off and they got mad at this guy and they said, we're going to make you lose money. So they pushed the price up. They pushed it up by buying a lot of the stock, buying a lot of the options and causing what is called a short squeeze where the people that short sell because they're losing so much money, they have to go buy the stock, too. And it pushes the stock up even further. So it's just like it's like what they what, what you might call a melt up of the stock price instead of a meltdown. It's a melt up. And so now GameStop has gone up from, you know, maybe 13, 14, 15 dollars a share to 300 and something dollars a share. Now, I told you guys at the beginning of this, of this conversation, we were at 315 um and uh but that price dropped actually to two something, um maybe 250, 260. Let me see where it is now. Okay, so 262 now. So that's why that's the danger of this stock. That's why I say be very, very careful because bad things can happen. Uh, do you think this shows how the market is a scam? Uh, Thaddeus, I don't think it shows the market is a scam. I think it shows it what the market is made of. The market is run by human beings. Stock prices don't come out of thin air. Like Jesus, it's not like Jesus sends a memo and says, this is what stock prices are supposed to be. Stock prices come from market demand. It comes from the price that people are willing to pay. 
And human beings are the ones that are paying that price. So whenever there's a transaction between two human, human beings, that becomes the price. So if somebody's willing to pay a high price for something, then that increases the market value. But if nobody's willing to pay that price, then that can't be the price. So I don't think it, it means it's a scam. I think it does mean, though, that there are scammers there. There are people there that can, you know, do some shady things. Donald Trump made a lot of money manipulating the market back in the day. He used to manipulate the market during the um, hostile takeover era. What happened back then was Donald Trump was kind of the, the 1980s equivalent of of an, an um, internet influencer. He would, you know, people watched him. They knew him as the money man. They, they, they saw him get involved in a lot of hostile takeovers. So whenever Trump uh, would go and start buying up shares of a company, the price would go up because everybody would say, oh, we want to get ahead of Donald Trump. He's, he's buying all this stock. So let me buy so I can make money as the price goes up. So, well, Trump knew this. Trump, you know, has always taken pleasure in knowing that things he says or things he does can move the entire stock market. He still loves, he still does that to this day. And so Trump would go and deliberately buy a lot of, of a company's stock. He would pretend like he was going to take over the company and everybody would start buying it and the stock would go up you know, five to 10 to 20 to $30 a share. And then Trump would dump the stock. Trump would get out and say, no, I wasn't going to take it over. I just thought it was a good investment. So people like that, because they have the ability to speak words and speak life into stock prices like hit Donald Trump, Warren Buffett and others. They tend to be really, really good at predicting stocks. Well, why are they really good at predicting what a stock price is going to do? Because they get to decide what the price is going to do. It's like me predicting whether or not Boyce is going to eat dinner at seven o'clock or seven thirty. I get to make that decision. So my prediction is going to be more accurate than anybody else's. Do you follow what I'm saying? So, so this, so yeah, so that, that, that influence is there. It's real. It's kind of been documented. This is new because it's never really come from the internet. It's never really come from uh, what they call uninformed investors who really aren't trained in, in business and finance and all that. Uh, but you know, it, it's going to be what it is. I, I think regulators are going to step in just to minimize the volatility, but I think that some of this influence is definitely here to stay. And I look forward to seeing what happens with it. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here, guys. I'm going to be back on actually tonight at eight o'clock. I'm doing a um, a panel uh, with uh, with with a group of really smart black women. We're going to talk about uh, how how do you, how do you love a man with no money, or can you love a man with no money? So if you want to join us, uh, feel free to join us at the Black Financial Channel or drboystv.com. We're going to go live on both places. So I'll see you guys a little bit later. Please hit the thumbs up button, share, subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. And uh, and also uh, make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel and all that good stuff. So, uh, oh, by the way, if you haven't learned to buy stock yet and you want to learn more and you want to get free stuff from the Black Business School, go to firstshareofstock.com. That's a good place for you to get started. And uh, don't worry, I can teach you everything you need to know. So take care. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day. Love you. Peace.